My name is Karen. I'm a 25-year-old employee. My grandfather, who raised me, passed away six months ago. Today is the day when the lawyer will open my grandfather's will. That's why I was visiting my grandfather's house with my sister Susan, who was four years older and is my only family. Our parents passed away in an accident 20 years ago, and since then, we were raised by our grandparents. Since my grandmother passed away from an illness a few years ago, my grandfather's spirits have been declining year by year, and he became frequently ill. Out of concern, I lived in an apartment near my grandfather's house and often went back to check on him. You're a grown woman. It's unbecoming to keep coming back home, my grandfather would say, but he would always laugh cheerfully nonetheless. Then one day, as I went to visit, like I usually did, I found my grandfather lying in pain at the entrance. In a panic, I called the ambulance, but my grandfather passed away just like that. Hey, what are you daydreaming for? At least prepare some tea. My sister's voice brought me back to reality. Right, the lawyer will be here soon. I responded and headed to the kitchen. Taking a quick glance, I saw my sister lazily stretching out her legs on the mat and yawning. I could still smell my sister's strong perfume even in the kitchen, a bit away and I made a face. She's the same as always, I murmured under my breath, placing the kettle on the stove. My sister has always been the type to only care about herself. Once she hit her teens, she started dyeing her hair as if it were natural. She hung out with the so-called delinquents and was always out and about, demanding money without working. Part-time was a given. Even when she caused trouble and her grandparents had to apologize on her behalf, she was unperturbed. I, being the quiet one, often had to deal with the fallout. She doesn't seem to have changed much even after becoming an adult. She doesn't have a stable job and seems to just be drifting around while working part-time, I knew she had been asking our grandfather for money whenever I wasn't around. It was easy to imagine that she would have found this all too troublesome if it weren't for the inheritance. Ah, you must be the lawyer. Thanks for coming today. I heard my sister's high-pitched formal voice, indicating that the lawyer had arrived. I hurriedly placed tea leaves into the teapot and headed towards the entrance. Thank you for coming today. I had met the lawyer at the funeral. His eyes were as kind as my grandfather's. A lawyer's badge shone brightly on his chest. After offering incense in front of my grandfather's portrait, he took a sip of the tea I served and then took out my grandfather's will. It was entrusted to him by my grandfather while he was still alive. The content was as follows. My elder sister Susan was to inherit $20 million in cash, and I, the younger daughter, was to inherit this house and the land it sits on. Upon hearing this, my sister burst out laughing. Twenty million in cash for the elder daughter and only an old house for the younger one. How hilarious! It's just right for someone as plain as you. It's not just the house. There's also the land, I retorted, to which my sister laughed snidely. Ha! Huh, the value of this land in such a godforsaken place is hardly surprising. Ah, I would have preferred cash. I guess Grandpa must have had a soft spot for me after all. I can't deny that I am a bit shocked. I felt a sense of emptiness saying it out loud. Even though I was being modest, verbalizing it felt like an acknowledgement. Wow, beautiful, and have money. Now she's the more, the better victory. I shot Brian a side glance for his insensitive comment. Realizing his gap, he joked, your comfort means more to me than money, Karen. Brian has been my boyfriend since I started working. We met at a social event and being of the same age, we clicked well. I've introduced him to my grandfather and my sister. While he hasn't proposed yet, I have been considering marriage. Today was our first date in the wild and I ended up telling Brian about my inheritance. I suppose it was because I thought he would become my husband someday. I had no idea I would come to regret this. A few days later, I was visiting the family home I had inherited from my grandfather. I had intended to clean and sort out my grandfather's belongings. 
The property was large, but the house was modest. I figured I could manage it on my own and looked around the house and pondered. It's close to my workplace. Maybe I should move here. Living here leisurely with a cat doesn't sound too bad. There would be no rent to pay, and while there might be maintenance costs for deterioration, I have been working hard and saving so it shouldn't be a problem. Maybe someday with Brian. Feeling embarrassed at the thought, I shook my head vigorously. I rolled up my sleeves to begin cleaning. Just then, I received a call. My sister's name appeared on my smartphone screen. Sis, what's up? Hey, Karen, having fun all by yourself in that old house. My sister seemed to be drunk. She always had a unique way of extending her words, but today it was particularly bad. Since you're drinking, aren't you? It's still afternoon, I pointed out with a sigh to which she exaggeratedly sighed back. Oh, you're such a Miss Goody Two Shoes. I was right, she had been drinking. I was thinking about moving here eventually, I answered my sister's question, hoping to end the conversation quickly. Really? I'm enjoying a suite in a luxury hotel right now. My sister raised her voice in a somewhat exaggerated way. Guess who I'm with right now? I have no idea. Boring. It's that kind of attitude that'll make Brian dislike you. What? I'm sorry, Karen. I was flabbergasted when Brian's voice took over the line. The sudden intervention of Brian threw me off balance, dizzying question marks popping up in my head. But I resented my imagination. At this point, a disgusting imagination had been completed in my head. Surprised, huh? My sister's mean-spirited voice chimed in. Ever since you introduced him to me, I thought Brian was quite a catch. She rattled off boastfully about how she had been attracted to Brian since I introduced him, how she knew where he worked because of me, and how she had approached him as soon as he left work. He came along readily when she asked, telling her that she was hundreds of times more attractive than me. I listened in stunned silence. Karen, I'm really sorry. The next voice I heard was Brian's again. Tell me it's a mistake. As I tried to utter words that wouldn't come, he spoke again. As a man, I had to take this opportunity. What? I do feel bad about it, but come on. It's impossible to resist a beautiful woman who has twenty million dollars, right? The way he spoke, as if asking me to understand, drained my emotions away. I felt a cold sensation like my blood was being drained from me. You know what? I don't meet a man like you. At my words, I could hear my sister laughing uproariously in the background. The voice on the phone changed back to my sister. Well, that's how it is, and from now on, let's not consider ourselves sisters, okay? I wouldn't want you turning to me just because you're broke. With those words, she ended the call. Overwhelmed by emotions that had lagged behind, all I could do was cry out. Five years have passed since then, I had a cat in my lap dozing off in front of my laptop. The cat was also purring contently in sleep. Today is my day off, but there is still a bit of work left from what I brought home. Oh no, this won't get the work done. I felt guilty, but I had to move the cat off my lap. Just as I reached out, my phone started to ring. An unfamiliar number was displayed on my smartphone. Thinking it could be work-related, I answered the call without any suspicion. Hello, Karen, long time no see. I instantly knew who it was and froze. The distinctive way of speaking was unmistakably my sister's. It's you, Karen, isn't it? I can tell just from your initial hello, after all, I'm your big sister. Five years had passed, which should make Susan 34. A smirk formed at the corner of my mouth at her unchanging way of talking. You're just the same. By the way, I came home, and there's a hotel standing. Did you sell the house? That's none of your business. Oh, come on. It's quite a grand hotel, huh? You must have made a good chunk of change, huh? Getting fed up, I was about to end the call when she started to chatter about her current situation. 
According to Susan, she had blown through the inheritance in about two years. Now she even had a considerable amount of debt. Even Brian, who she's still hanging around, seemed to be drowning in debt. I was speechless. Honestly, I couldn't care less, so lend me some money. Against Susan's yelling, I answered calmly. I've always wondered why Grandpa distributed his estate that way, but on the day you took Brian from me and cut ties, I understood. I started talking slowly. Five years ago, when Brian broke up with me, I was crushed. After crying my heart out, I sat dazed in my room, staring into space. I'm such a fool. As I murmured this, large tears began to spill again. My gaze fell on a painting I had made as a child and had gifted to my grandfather. He had framed it and kept it hanging lovingly. Rising unsteadily, I picked up the painting. Grandpa. When the feelings of nostalgia and loneliness welled up and tears started to come, I felt something drop from the back of the frame. Picking it up, I saw it was a fresh sheet of notepaper addressed to me. I remembered how, when I was little, I used to stick notes on the back of this frame and exchange secret messages with my grandfather. It was like a family journal, really. Knowing that I was to inherit the house, he probably figured I'd find this note. I'm glad I noticed. I shuddered at the thought that I might have left it unnoticed. To Karen, the date on the letter was just before my grandfather passed. I knew you'd definitely notice this letter. Right now, you're probably wondering why I distributed my estate in such a manner. Cash to your sister and an old house and land for you. It may seem like I favored Susan, but that's not the case. Despite any claims of favoritism, I wanted to leave most of my estate to you, who cared for me till the end. I finally understood what had been bothering me. No matter what, Grandpa thought more of me, huh? I'm sure I was deeply hurt by Susan's words at that time. Despite having loved my grandfather more, a kind of jealousy, I continued to read the letter. But Susan would not be satisfied with a regular division. This child, even as her grandfather, I must admit she's terribly greedy. Exactly, Grandpa. She even took my boyfriend from me. That's what I want to tell him in my heart. That's why I arranged it. This way, if at first glance Susan appears to have received the better deal, she won't pay attention to your share. According to Grandfather's letter, the value of this land in our area is continuously increasing due to ongoing urban development. As of the time I'm writing this, it's not worth Susan's twenty million yet, but the value of this land will surely increase in the future. When I read this far, my eyes widened in surprise. You can live here if you're attached to it, or you can sell it when its value rises enough to make a good profit. All I want is for you to be happy. When I finished conveying the content of the letter, Susan clicked her tongue and said, Hag. I lived in that house for a while, but when my marriage was settled, I decided to sell the house just like Grandfather's letter said. The land value had risen enough anyway on never lending you money. Susan seemed frustrated, but as if she had a good idea, she said this, Right, if you want, I can give Brian back to you. So help your sister. It's a good deal, right? At this moment, I heard something snap inside of me. Enough is enough. You've been taken care of by Grandpa, and yet you haven't shown a hint of gratitude. I despise you for that, and you're not my sister anymore. And besides, I'm already married. I don't need Brian and I don't even want to see his face. Stay out of my life for good. I said what I needed to say and hung up. I quickly set up call blocking and my cat on my lap was cowering on the bed. I quickly picked up my cat and said, I'm sorry. After that, it seems Susan contacted Brian and they both stormed into our old house. Did they try to return Brian to me? There's a respectable end there now but they must have misunderstood something and were shouting that they were my relatives, even though I just sold the land and had nothing to do with it. It's simple for those two. I sold the land, and an N was built equals I must be the owner of the end. 
Of course, the staff reported to the police. The two of them were arrested because they had destroyed several items in the end. Furthermore, it was discovered that they had been committing marriage fraud for money in the past. Seems they'll be sent to prison together. I was also questioned by the police, but I was able to prove that I had no involvement quickly as we were estranged and was released. As my husband, who came to pick me up, and I were walking through the station, we heard screaming and turned our gaze. And there were Susan and Brian who looked completely different. Fortunately, they didn't notice us. Both of them had messy hair, worn-out clothes, and looked nothing like the two people I remember. Especially Susan, who never skipped her makeup and fashion, looked even more different. They were probably being moved into a different location. As I watched the two of them filled with a sense of melancholy, my husband and I locked eyes. I grabbed the hand he extended, and we left the police station. Are you okay? My husband, always concerned, looked at me with gentle eyes. I'm okay. I have you and this little one. I touched my fairly noticeable belly and smiled back. In my belly, a new member of our family is growing. Money is important, but there's something even more valuable. That's what I want to teach our child with my husband by my side.